So in the UK, we obviously have a new Prime Minister who Donald Trump referred to as Britain's Trump. And while I don't think that is 100% accurate, it does give you a good indication of what Boris Johnson is like, and especially his stance on a lot of things to do with Brexit. But one of the more dangerous things that has been going on throughout, you know, the last three years of, you know, back and forth between the EU and Britain is everything to do with Ireland and the Good Friday Agreement. And I'm going to get in to everything Boris Johnson has recently said and how dangerous it all is. But basically the short of it is he has said the Republic of Ireland should leave the EU and join the UK. And obviously this is crazy talk for one thing, but it fails to really recognise what, like 800 years of Irish history and shows the real, you know, lack of intelligence the Tories have despite going to all these, you know, wonderful schools and everything. But to get things started, I think I will give everyone a quick geography lesson of the UK and Ireland because as an English person, you sometimes think the whole world knows about, you know, the UK and the differences between Great Britain and these other different, you know, titles it has. But then you realise a lot of people don't understand this. It's through no fault of your own. We're a pretty small country. But I'm going to just get into the differences between all these countries and the difficulties that come with Brexit and the British Isles. So to get things started, the Republic of Ireland is not part of the United Kingdom. I know a lot of people think it's Ireland and England are one thing. They're not. So the Republic of Ireland is the South and the north of Ireland is obviously the north, and that is part of the United Kingdom. Now, the United Kingdom is England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. They form one union. And basically what that means is that the main parliament in London is where all these parties meet, you know, parties from across the different countries. We have parties from Wales, parties from Scotland, parties from Northern Ireland, and obviously lots of parties from England. I and mean, then you have English parties that are active in other areas. So for example, Scotland has, you know, the Scottish Labour Party and the, you know, Scottish Conservative Party, but it's part of the General Conservative Party. So when we talk about Great Britain, we talk about the island that has England, Wales and Scotland in it because it's called the United Kingdom of Great Britain, which is that, and Northern Ireland, so it's attached to it. Now, the whole of Ireland did used to be a part of the UK, but thanks to the Irish War of Independence, the South got their own state, the Irish Free State, and eventually they got independence from the Crown as well and formed the Republic of Ireland, whereas Ulster remained in the Union because Ulster was home to a lot of Protestants who were descended from the English, and they were basically saying, you know, we're not going to go. And part of the initial deal was that England gets to keep the North. Now, obviously, many Irish people were not happy with that. And this is where all the problems come with Northern Ireland. So the Republicans, you know, the IRA essentially fought to liberate Northern Ireland and make it join the Republic of Ireland. So you would have a lot of Southern Irish going into Northern Ireland to fight, but you'd also have a lot of Catholics in the North fighting for their own independence from England. Now, this was all resolved through political means in 1997 when the Good Friday Agreement was signed by all parties. And what the Good Friday Agreement essentially says is that it recognises the will of the Irish people potentially to become unified through political means. So what this means is that, you know, one day Northern Ireland could have a referendum on whether they want to join the Republic of Ireland. And there's nothing really the UK can do to stop that because that is what they agreed in the Good Friday Agreement. And that was a sort of compromise because obviously the Republicans wanted the North to join immediately with the Republic, whereas a lot of the Protestants in Ulster wanted to stay part of the Union with England. So in Northern Ireland at the moment, there's a bit of a deadlock. You had the DUP who have the most seats, but they only had the most seats by one. And then you have Sinn Féin with the second most who have only one less seat. And if they took over, they could call their referendum. So there is a likelihood this will happen in the future. Now, part of the Good Friday Agreement as well is that there is no hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Again, recognising, you know, the will one day of these two countries to become one. We're not going to, you know, put any barriers in the way. But where the problem comes from is that Ireland is in the EU and Northern Ireland is going to be leaving the EU. So it's become a massive issue in the negotiations. And what the problem is, is that if... Northern Ireland left the EU and a hard border was imposed that might galvanise a lot of Republicans to fight again because they would see Northern Ireland as essentially being closed off from becoming part of the Republic of Ireland. And that is a massive problem you have 
in the region. So now I've outlined for you the geography of Ireland and the history and you know why it's such a precarious situation at the moment. So now let's get into Boris Johnson's recent comments on what Ireland should do to solve this problem. So Business Insider reporting, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson reportedly wants Ireland to agree to temporarily leave its trading union with the European Union and join with the UK instead after Brexit. The Sun newspaper reports that Downing Street is considering asking Ireland to voluntarily diverge from EU rules to prevent a hard border between the two countries after Britain leaves the EU. Under the plan, Ireland would gain a special dispensation from Brussels to leave its trading rules until new alternative arrangements to the Northern Ireland backstop are established. The solution is a bilateral agreement to agree a common rulebook for Britain and Ireland for as long as we need one, a senior minister in Johnson's government told The Sun. The person added, ideally, though the EU would formally propose it rather than us, so it's more acceptable to the Irish. So Ireland described the proposal as worrying and said this is an EU-UK matter, we are the EU, there is no scope for bilateral agreement. Neil Richmond, the Brexit spokesman for Ireland's ruling Finn Gael party, tweeted, adding that the apparent proposal was a worrying pivot by the UK government. Ireland's deputy prime minister told RT Radio that Ireland would not be steamrolled by Britain and said there is a consequence to the approach that the British government has taken and that the consequence is that they are making a no deal far more likely, he said. The proposal for a new trade union between the two countries is reportedly one of the creative solutions Johnson has said he'll raise with EU leaders this week. So you see how out of touch Boris Johnson is, right? So the EU has been good for the Republic of Ireland. It's been good for its economy. It's been good in really helping it progress. Why do the Tories think that they would drag themselves into bed with their government who are totally incompetent who can't agree on anything and are basically doing Brexit just to maintain power because initially they called a referendum because they didn't want their seats being eaten into by Nigel Farage and UKIP. That is essentially it. It's elites playing with the future of the country because of their power. Why would Ireland drag themselves into that? Why would they voluntarily be like, oh, let's leave the EU. We'll join with you until you can figure out a deal with the EU so we can solve the backstop issue, which is an issue that you are creating yourselves and you can find a solution to without dragging us into this. It's such a mess and like I've been outlining, it's not really like a laugh and matter. It's not something to play around with. You could really reopen a lot of this sectarianism in Ireland if you mess this up, if you put a hard border on the north. People think that was a lifetime ago. You know, for me, you know, I was born in 1995, Good Friday Agreement's 1997. I don't remember this really, do I? But I still appreciate, you know, how relevant it is because it's 22 years ago it happened. People are still alive that had family members killed by the IRA or killed by the Ulster Defence Force or killed by the British Army in Northern Ireland. It's still like a sore patch on Irish history. In Northern Ireland, you still get a lot of bombs that have to be defused by the British Army because Republican elements still operate. You know, it's still a thing there. It's not as big, but it still is a thing. So the fact that Boris Johnson thinks the creative solution is to ask Ireland to join with the UK and be at the Tory government's mercy, rather than be in their strong position in the EU, where they hold the cards really, because it's the UK leaving the EU. It's not Ireland. It's not down to them to solve the border thing. It's down to the UK to give a solution that doesn't violate the Good Friday Agreement. And out of all people, I'm gonna give praise to Nancy Pelosi because she said, if Britain doesn't work out something that respects the Good Friday Agreement, we're not gonna approve a trade deal between the US and the UK. And I'm thankful someone is doing something about this because of course, Bill Clinton was deeply involved in the Good Friday Agreement. So it makes sense, someone like Nancy Pelosi has been around a long time, would want to protect something that Democrats and a Democratic president work so hard to preserve. And yes, I'm just thankful, you know, that the Democrats own Congress so they can really vote against things like that. Because it's totally laughable that Boris Johnson's creative solution is this. And I think it shows you how totally out of control Brexit has become. You, you think, you know, your economy and everything is bad with Trump, which it is. We have a similar situation here where a total moron is driving the Brexit train and he's gonna drive it off a cliff. Like, we thought with Theresa May, we're definitely not gonna get a no deal. People are expecting a no deal Brexit, and people want it. You know, I said it in one of my other videos, I can't believe how well the brainwashing has been done in this country, where people want something that's gonna hurt this country so, so much. But it's not gonna hurt the people doing this. It's not gonna hurt Boris Johnson and his cabinet, which is the annoying thing. As part of my freelance job, I write a lot about Brexit and how bad it's gonna affect the economy. It's gonna affect the economy really badly anyway. 
if we don't get a deal, it's going to be disastrous. Not to mention this stuff with Ireland that could be so bad. Imagine if this Brexit stuff reopens the troubles, you know what I mean? That, that might sound far-fetched, but imagine if that happens. We've literally reopened that for no reason, apart from the Conservatives just playing around with people's future because they want to keep their party in power. That is essentially all Brexit is. That's all you need to narrow it down to because basically they stoked up fears of immigration, they stoked up xenophobic myths just to get their way. And it's really not going to help us at all. And while there are socialist arguments for leaving the EU, you can't trust a government like the Tory government to implement them. So anyway, it's super frustrating. And as an Anglo-Irish person, it's just maddening to see someone like Boris Johnson play around with the future, just like it's a toy, you know, thinking this is a creative solution. If you want to reopen sectarianism, maybe it's a creative solution. Ludicrous to think Ireland could leave the EU and join with the UK for a new trade deal just between them two. It's like crazy talk. What world do these people exist in? Do you know what I mean? They go to Oxbridge, they work in government all their lives, and this is what they come up with. Why are the right wing just such morons? Why can they not see how illogical this is? It's just so frustrating. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please like the video, maybe subscribe if you're new. If you want to find me on social media, follow me at The Cavernacle on both Twitter and Instagram. Maybe check out my WordPress blog, which is The Cavernacle WordPress. The link is in the description. I also have a Patreon, and thanks to all my patrons. I really, really appreciate it. And if you want to have a look at that, just check it out in the description as well. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.